Hello, welcome to Board with Paint. Today, I'll be continuing my Divinity Original Sin the Board Game painting series with Episode 2, where we paint Fane. If you're new to painting, make sure you check out Episode 0, where I show you everything you'll need and show you how to prime the miniature, which I've already done here. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll start off by painting the frilly shirt and collar. Here I'm desaturating some bloody red using some goblin green to get sort of a darker color. It started looking a little orange, so I added a tiny bit of warlord purple to get it back to the tone that I was looking for. Here's the application of the color to the ruffles underneath his neck. I'll also be using this to paint the inside of the collar. Next, we'll paint the bulk of Fane's clothing by mixing a tiny bit of blue into black. Fane appears to get his fashion sense from Ghost Rider, and it looks like he's wearing all this black leather. So we're going to try and recreate that here. I'm covering all of his clothes with this, only avoiding the hands, head, and cape. Going off of some of the artwork I saw online, he has some more areas of red on his sleeves, so I'm doing that in the same mix we used for the ruffles and the collar. Next we'll paint the cape in sort of a light blue color. Here I'm mixing a little bit of stonewall gray and magic blue and then darkening it slightly with some black. And then we apply this all over the cape but avoiding the parts of the collar that we already painted in red. Bring this up to the outer part of the neck, and then I also decided to paint the upper portion of the collar with the blue. Now we'll paint Fane's bones by mixing some black in with some stonewall gray. This is probably about three to one gray to black. And then we'll use this to paint the hands and the head. As I mentioned in previous videos, you'll usually need to apply more than one coat even though I don't show it on camera, you can assume that I go through and paint the other coats after this dries. You want the paint to be completely opaque. And depending on the color, this will either take two coats or possibly even three or four. Or 4D if you're painting yellow. To add some variety, I'm mixing a very dark leather color with brown and black together. And we'll use this on some of the straps that are on his outfit.
He's also got these areas of trim on the outfit that I've decided to paint with pure stonewall gray. Now we move on to chain mail and use this to paint anything that's metal. This includes the shorter armor and the armor around the boots. You'll also want to hit the metal parts of the straps that are on his outfit. Once the paint is completely dry, we're going to hit the entire miniature except for the cape with some black wash. You don't need to be shy with this, you can just sort of slop it on all over the place. It should seep down into the recesses and start to bring out some detail, as well as slightly tinning the color underneath to make it a little bit darker. Washes can take a while to dry, so while we wait for that, we can apply some white paint in all of the little designs and runes that are around the bottom of the base. Don't worry about going outside the lines. We're going to use this for a pretty cool effect later. Next, we'll use a dry brush technique to add some highlights. Here I'm loading the brush with Stonewall Gray and then wiping off excess paint on a paper towel. See how little comes off on my thumb. That's what we're looking for. And then we'll brush this over all the areas of bone to give it a nice highlight. Now we'll repeat this by mixing a little bit of dead white into the stonewall gray. And once again, we go back to our paper towel and brush it off so that we have an almost clean brush. And then we'll apply further highlights just on the upper and raised portions of the head and the fingers. Now we'll start to highlight the black leather. And I'm taking that original black and blue mix, adding more stonewall gray and a little bit of white into it to lighten it. And we'll go around the outfit and pick out any of those little folds of cloth and hit the raised areas, leaving the recesses untouched. We want those to remain dark, almost black.
Now we'll progressively lighten this color by adding more white and then go back to the miniature, reapplying over the same areas, but maybe only covering half as much space. We want to keep these highlighted areas very focused and small. That will give the illusion that the leather is shiny. For this third highlight, we'll repeat it again, adding more white and keeping the highlights even smaller. Now I'll add a little bit of highlight to the metal portions simply by returning to the chain mail and reapplying it over a smaller area than we did our base coat. This will work out for us because we applied that black wash over it earlier which darkened the metal slightly. Now we'll go back to pure stonewall gray and highlight those little areas of trim. Now I'll return to that red mix we made originally and highlight the red parts of the clothing by mixing in a little bit more of the bloody red. And here, as with the rest of the outfit, I'm just trying to pick out those raised areas and leave the recesses untouched. And I'm also applying a small amount of highlight to the inside of the collar. We can leave it darker down where it gets closer to the neck. And we also want to be sure to highlight those areas of red around the forearms. And there he is with the clothes highlighted. Now I'll add some detail to the face, starting with his glowing eyes. To do this, we'll first fill in the eye sockets with some pure black. And while we have this out, we'll also do the nose holes. And then I'm tracing the mouth line just to re-emphasize that because I don't think it stuck out quite enough. Now to make the eyes look like they're glowing, we'll get our smallest brush and put some dead white on it and just put a small dot right in the center of the black area. 
We'll do this on both eyes. You want to make sure there's black surrounding the white, though. Then for the blue glow, we'll take some blue paint and add a ton of water to it so it flows really nicely. We want this to be somewhat transparent. And then we just color the entire inside of the eye sockets. And we can even allow the paint to spill outside the sockets a little bit. This will give the effect of light hitting the bones outside the eye sockets. Next, we'll highlight the cape. And here I'm returning to that original cape color and mixing in some stonewall gray to lighten it slightly. This will pretty much follow the same procedure we used for Ifin in the previous video. The general idea is to add your highlights on the tops of any of the folds in the cloak and to leave the recesses untouched. We'll increase this highlight over some successive layers, each time adding a little bit of white to brighten it up. If the color starts to get a little bit too desaturated, feel free to add a little more blue. Here I'm lightening it with some gray and apply the highlights again. Each time we do this, we want to cover slightly less area so that the highlight appears to gradually go from dark to light. Next, we'll bring out the shadows of the cloak by mixing a custom wash color. We'll start off with some black wash, thin it down with a few drops of water, and then add a drop of blue and a drop of red. Just mix these all together until they form one color. We're looking for sort of a dark bluish purple. Now we'll apply this over the entire cloak. This will both bring out the shadows and bring the layers of highlight together that we did in the previous steps. While that dries, we'll return to the base and paint the top of the base completely in black. Stay away from that white area for now though. For the rest of the base, we'll dry brush it in black using a large brush. Here I'm brushing off the excess. And then all we do is brush around the base over top of the white. The black will only get picked up on the upper surfaces and it will leave white down in the recesses giving us this nice effect. Also make sure you paint around the rim of the base. 
Now for a couple of finishing touches on the face. Here I'm using Glorious Gold to paint the, the thing that's on his forehead. I don't have any idea what it is, but in artwork it appears to be gold. Next, I'm painting the gem that's in the middle of this, starting by painting the entire thing black. Then with some thinned down Warlord purple, we'll paint just the bottom bit of the gem. This is a little fiddly, so feel free to consider this whole thing optional. Here I'm just going over it again to get a little more saturation in that purple. And then to sell it as a gem, we put a white dot right at the top. And that's it for Fane. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like it. If you're looking for more from me, you can check me out on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, where I'll sometimes post works in progress. I'm also interested in hearing from all of you, so let me know what you think, or if there's anything you want me to paint next. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, happy painting!